Hi, my name is Kara Clark and I'm a board game reviewer for MeepleGamers.com. I also like to paint miniatures. And when the site manager for Meeple Gamers found out that I paint miniatures, he asked me to do a series of tutorials for you to watch. And I was really nervous because up until then, the way that I've been painting miniatures is basically, I want this color there, I'm just going to put it on. One layer, done. Um, and that's not how you're supposed to paint miniatures, I found out. So I was nervous because it meant that if I'm going to do these tutorials, I would have to completely start from scratch of how I paint miniatures. And it's been a learning curve. I went to a, couple, uh, to a workshop and they taught me the proper way to paint and it's just, it's just different. I've watched videos and I'm still a newbie, but I'm here to teach you what I've learned so far so that together, you know, if you're a newbie and I'm a newbie, together we can kind of learn and grow together as we progress and become better miniature painters. Today, I would officially like to invite you to join me on my painting journey. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you how to do, something that I learned past week of working with these new miniature paints, is how to um, just do basic base painting, dry brushing, and shading. So I have this little ghoul. This is what he looks like. I think he's a ghoul. And I painted this one last night to practice. And you can see this one looks much more alive than this one that's just primed. So I'm going to teach you how to turn this one into, you know, a painted one, obviously. So I have this Citadel holder. This is what it looks like. And if you decide that you want to paint minis and you think it's going to be something that you do a lot, I would highly recommend getting a miniature holder because it takes so much pressure off of your hands of having to grip this tiny base and trying to just hold it in your fingertips because the holder holds it in place for you so you can hold it with your whole hand and that way it doesn't slip or fall or anything like that. The first thing you want to do when you are getting ready to paint a miniature is you want to wash them and prime them. So I washed this using a bottle brush that we had. We have a baby so I just used the bottle brush and it worked great. You can also use a hard bristle toothbrush if you want and that will work great also. It's to help clear out any dust or oils that might have gotten in the miniature during manu manufacturing or even if you've played with them before. You don't want those oils sticking on your miniature because it will dilute the paints and or make them look weird and not stick right. So you gotta wash it and then prime it. And I used this Army, the Army Painter Black Primer. I used the black because I this is a ghost. He's like a demon ghost. And so I wanted him to look dark. You can see on here he does, he looks dark, which is great. If I had used a white primer, his colors would have shown up a lot brighter. He wouldn't have looked quite as mysterious or dangerous or spectatory as he does. But if you want bright colors, use a white primer. And I'm going to do a video later on a little princess mini that I have that I do, I do want her colors to be bright because she's a princess. And you can see on here that you can still see the plastic underneath the primer. You don't want to spray it super thick because the point of a primer is to give your paint something to grip onto. And if you just spray it, I mean it got a little thick on the back here. If you just spray it on thick, it gives you a same smooth flat finish and that's not what you want. It kind of defeats the purpose. So you want to spray it just enough to give it to where you can see it, but you can also see the miniature still underneath. One thing that I love is this wet palette. I mix a lot of my paints. I'm a cosmetologist, so we do a lot of mixing of hair colors and stuff, and so I like to mix my own mix my own colors. So I use this wet palette because these paints, these Reaper paints and Citadel, any miniature paints, they dry out really fast. So this wet palette, you can get one, you can look up wet palette, stay wet palette, and you can find them for 15 or $20. Or you can go and make one using a airtight Tupperware container, some parchment paper, and just like a cloth sponge, or even a regular sponge, and that will do it for you. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that you wanna do when you get done with your priming and it's dry and everything is you want to paint on your base color. So I'm using, most of what I'm using today is Reaper paints. This is what they look like. This is Twilight Purple. And I wanted to use a purple one because I feel like purple ghosts look the most sinister. I'm going to mix three drops of purple, and here we have Tempest Gray. Mix one drop of that just to tone it down, tone down the purple just a little bit. And the last one 
we're going to mix in just a drop of black. And black is a really powerful color, so when you're adding black to something, you don't need a lot of it. You can just use the back of an old paintbrush to mix it all together. So that's mixed up really nice. It's a nice dark purple. So most of the brushes that I use today are Army Painter miniature brushes. This is the small dry brush. And it's flat, which is good for getting in crevices and stuff. So I'm going to get my brush. And you're not supposed to get it on more than halfway up the bristles. I'm really bad at that, but I'm sure you'll do better. Okay. And you're just going to paint it all over the miniature. Oh, you should water down your paints too, I learned. So you can just dip your brush in the water, add a little bit. See, still learning. It's okay. And just paint it on because you want to have thin coats so that the details in your miniature don't get obscured. That's another benefit of washing them before you paint is that if there's any dust or oil in the cracks, they could obscure the, the details which will make it not look as good when you paint. It's okay if it gets onto the base because we can paint over it later. So this is a really simple miniature because he's all one color. So we don't have to be careful about, you know, not, pa not painting his backpack the, r the same color as his body or not painting his pants the same color as his body because he doesn't wear pants or a backpack because he's a reaper ghost. Maybe he would have a backpack for reaping souls. I don't know. Okay, so he's all covered and it looks really bright purple right now. And I did mix it a little bit brighter because when it dries over the black primer, it's going to look darker. Also, we're gonna put a wash on it later. Nolan oil, a black wash, and that is gonna to tone down the colors too. When we get finished with the base and the wash, He's not even, he's barely gonna look purple at all. So I went a little brighter so that when we tone it down, it will look better. So we need to wait for him to dry and you can tell that they're dry when they're not shiny anymore. If you try to paint a second coat on top of a wet coat, it won't stick as well. It'll pull paint up from different parts that are still wet and it just will look splotchy. And if you try to paint a color over a different color that hasn't dried, they will mix on the miniature and make a cloudy, gross color that you usually don't want there. So we're gonna wait for him to dry. Okay, here he is all dry. You can see that he's already toned down a lot. So we're gonna go ahead with our second coat of paint. Dry off my brush a little, get it wet again, so I can re-wet the paints. Here we go with the second coat. The second coat just helps to kind of even out any spaces that you might have missed on your first coat, any places that didn't get quite as saturated, so that everything comes out in a nice layer. With some miniatures, you'll do a lot of coats. I did one last week, or I think I did eight coats. Um, she was very large, and she was wearing a long dress, and it just took a lot of paint to um, get everything, a lot of layers to get everything looking smooth and ready. I'm not gonna paint inside his mouth this time because I wanna do it black at the end, so I'm not even gonna bother. He's got one coat on there in his mouth, and that's fine. Okay. So now we gotta wait for the second coat to dry. So now that his second coat is dry, we're ready to apply the wash. And like I said earlier, it's gonna tone this purple down a lot. So I have Citadel Paints. Uh, it's a shade, which means it shades your miniature. Pretty self-explanatory. This one is Nuln Oil, which means it's black. And I wanted a black wash for this mini because it's a cool color, like cold, cool as in cold which will help just bring out the darkness. Let's go with this one. It's another army painter. It's the regiment brush. So when you use Citadel paints, you always wanna take the paint from right here in the lid. It has this little scoop. Because if you put it down in here and there's nasty paint on your brush, it will make your wash or your shade turn all gross. So just put a little bit on and you wanna drag it across any ridges that your miniature might have and it will seep down, you can see it's already starting, seep down into those ridges and make everything really bring out the shadows that your miniature has. If it pulls up too much in an area, like right here, you can kind of use your brush to work it out. It 
And now we have to let him dry. So we'll let him dry. Now that our little ghoul is based and shaded, he's looking pretty dark. You can see we've got the shadows nice and shaded in there and he's got a nice purple undertone. Now we've got to bring out these ridges so that he has some added depth so you can see his texture. So we're gonna do some dry brushing. What I like to do is mix together that base color that we had and by now it's all pretty much dried out so we're just gonna mix it again. And it was three drops of purple, one drop of tempest gray, and just a small drop of the solid black. There we go. I'm gonna use the back of a brush to mix it. And it's okay to mix right on top of the, the dried up colors. And it kind of helps it helps you to match your colors to what you're, you had previously. Okay, all right, so we have the color that we used to shade him, but we want it a little bit lighter. So now I'm gonna add let's see, one, two, two to three drops of white and mix that in there. Oh yeah, and I'm also gonna add an, a drop of this blade steel color because I like the shimmer that it gives, especially for highlights on a ghost. I think that would be perfect because then he'll just have you know, when the light bounces off him just right, he'll have a little bit of shimmer. Okay, so for dry brushing, I just have this cheap brush that I got from Walmart. It's just flat, bristles are all one length. And I like it because it's a little stiffer. You can see that it's not, I mean, it's stiff, almost like a little toothbrush. And it works really well for dry brushing because as you brush it over things, the paint doesn't get down in the cracks as easily. And since it's just a cheap Walmart brush, I don't have to worry about dry brushing being too hard on the bristles. So you're gonna fill your brush up with paint and then wipe off almost as much as you can. And it helps to wipe it on your hand too until you, you're not really getting much. And then you're just gonna take the mini and brush it over the ridges, just like you did with the shade. You're gonna go you know, across the ridges, not down them because that won't give you the same effect. You're gonna go across, and you can push pretty hard. The harder you push, the better the paint settles in there. So you can see the difference between the back that we've dry brushed and the front that we have it. The back has more, you can see those details better. It's not leaving as much on there as I'd like anymore, so we're going to load up the brush again, and then wipe it off again until we're getting very little. Just brush it over everything. I'm not gonna get very much in his mouth because again, I want that to be black, so there's no point in dry brushing it. But if some does get in there, it's fine. I'll just paint over it. That's great, so we've done a layer of dry brushing and that has helped bring out a lot of his details. Now we're gonna add about two more drops of white to our purple color to make it even lighter. I'm gonna add even one more. Load up the brush, brush it out, test it. That's still pretty full. There we go. Okay, and just go over again. And this time I'm just gonna go over his shoulders, his face, and a little bit on these parts right here that you can see um, that are coming off of his body, like these little wispy parts because I really want those to look light. Light and wispy. Get his back, the top half of his back and his shoulders and around his face really well. We've got our second layer on there. Let's go for a third. So again, we'll add two drops, mix it in. We're going to do a third layer of dry brushing. Again, focusing mostly on his shoulders and his face. I'm focusing mostly on the shoulders and the face because I want him to get darker as, you, as your eyes travel toward the base. I want him to look darker. So the best way to do that is to just make, you know, from here up look lighter. I want his arms to be lighter and these wispies that are coming off of him. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to take 
some blade steel, again for that shimmer effect, some white to make it lighter, and just a little bit of this purple color. Mix it in here. And add a little bit more white because it kind of looks the same shade. We want it to be lighter, otherwise we're just painting on more of the same color. Dry out the brush. I'm using an old dish towel that I've been using for painting for a long time, but you can just use, you can use a towel if you want, or you can use um, like a paper towel, works fine. Adding the next layer. If, I, if you pull down on his teeth like this, more of the white residue will stay on them than if you brush up. So that's why I'm brushing down on the cheeks because I really want to highlight those areas. And the back of him, get his head real good. So that's, that's pretty good. He's pretty well highlighted. You can see he has a lot more the dimension to him than he had when we started. I do want these wisps to be just a little brighter because they're, you know, they're flowing off of him. I want them to look lighter. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm just gonna take white just white, and I'm going to use that same brush that I dry brush with that has probably just a little bit of a residue in it. Brush it off. I'm just really lightly going to touch on those wisp areas. And probably on his teeth because they're stretched. His mouth is stretched, so it should be lighter. Here's a wisp down here. You can kind of blend it into the surrounding area too, as if it's shiny. And it's giving off a type of light that's reflecting off the area around it. So there we go. And they look, I mean, they look different, but that's okay. We've got some on the base that we need to take care of. This black paint should still be good. I actually used that yesterday. Let's see, maybe add a little water to it, but it should still be good. And this is just Apple Barrel Craft Paint. I'm just gonna use this to touch up the base. So I didn't want to spend, I didn't want to use my nice paints on that. So I'm just, oh, I'm using a, just a Walmart brush also to do this because I like to shove the bristles up against the miniature. I don't want to do that to my nice brushes. But you can do it however you want. Just getting it in all the corners. Now I'm going to show you something that I tried last night that worked. We'll see if it works today. First I'm going to paint inside of his mouth to make it darker. Boop, boop, boop. Good deal. Okay, I'm going to brush it off like we're dry brushing. So, I mean, there's a little bit more. That's good. I'm going to brush it over his claws. Just back and forth really fast to kind of darken those up because I want them to look more solid. Like his claws are going to come out, they're real, and they will scratch you. Snatch your soul right out of your body. And under his arms too since, you know, if it's, if, if he was real, his shoulders would be blocking the light to his underarms. So we're going to tone that down. And I'm going to take just a little bit of the Nolan oil and just a smaller brush. So this one again, the Warhammer Regiment, we'll use that one. Just take a little bit of oil and I'm gonna put it right up here against the base. I'm gonna brush it up onto the miniature like this. Just brush it onto, you can even probably get it on the base and then just brush it up, brush it up really gently. And as you brush up, Pull, pull back like a C motion as you do it, and that'll help it to fade better. That's pretty good. And so what we've done there is we've brushed black wash up on the bottom of the mini. So now you can see he, he gradually changes from this really light white purple down to a black at the bottom, pushing, pulling that Nolan oil up off the bottom helped to do that and give it that effect. We did it on the back a little bit too, and since it's a wash, and it's really thin, you can still see some of his details underneath. We'll do his eyes. So I'm gonna use this Warhammer 
um, brush called The Psycho because, I don't know, it's crazy, crazy accurate, I guess. I'm just gonna brush a little bit, just get it on the tip. Just get a little bit on the tip, and I'm going to go in at an angle toward his eye. And then just stick it in there and pull the brush back just a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Alright, now for the nose. Barely stick just a couple little drops on there. Let's see, I do want to lighten up the top of his claws just a little bit because I think they got a little bit dark. So we're just going to go back with our dry brush. And just really lightly, the lighter you brush, the less paint gets left behind. So I'm just going to do it really lightly over his hands again. Just add a little bit of color back on there so it's not quite so flat. I think that we are done. So after you're finished and your mini is looking how you want it, let's see, let's do one more thing. We're going to take some of this um, Tempest Gray again. Just a little bit. Water it down. And wash it out. And I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing a tiny bit inside the mouth to bring out the little creepy things in his mouth. Kind of made it a little bit messy, but that's okay. We'll take our Nolan oil, and it's okay to do this while wet because it's also dark anyway. We kind of want them. You want to? I want to barely be able to see details. Okay. And then you can see in his mouth that there's just a little bit of detail that you can see, but you know it's a gaping hole. So I don't want to see a lot of detail. So he's done. They're both done. So after you finish a miniature, you want to finish them with a finishing spray, a clear spray to help protect them from the oils from your hands when you play or from like if they're dropped, you don't want the paint to chip. Okay. What I have that I've been using is just Rust-Oleum from Walmart. It's cheap and it says it bonds to, bonds to plastic. So that's important because these are plastic miniatures and you don't want the, the paint to just roll off. So this is a matte clear. Matte means that it doesn't have any shine to it. And what I found from these miniatures and using these paints is you don't want a lot of shine coming off of them because it just, it's too much. It makes your miniatures look overdone and doesn't look very nice. If there is something that you want to use a semi-gloss finish on, Rust-Oleum also makes a semi-gloss clear that bonds to plastic so you could use that also. So you'll just go and you'll, like with the primer, you'll do light coats two or three times until it looks all coated and finished until it's how you like it. Yeah, don't do too many coats of the matte though because it will develop a shine. If you have any tips for me, please let me know in the comments. If you have any questions about mixing colors or why I mix certain colors a certain way, please ask. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And thank you for joining me on my journey today.